It's Madden NFL 24, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the New York Giants, and it's all up next. We are situated about eight miles west of New York City at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the New York Giants. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. The longtime Panther Graham Gano has a set for his start as we are underway from MetLife Stadium. This fielded right at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Here come the Bengals and CD, of course, it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. And when you come into the league as the number one guy selected, a lot of hype comes with it. And sometimes that weight can be unbearable. But this young man, he took that weight on and handled it as well as you can imagine. And I love his ability to make a second, third reaction play and create downfield. Here's Burrow to throw right away. And this will be caught by his big wide receiver. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Well, this defense certainly knows they're going to have their hands full trying to slow down this passing game. Here's an example on the very first play from scrimmage. I think we'll see some different looks, maybe some pressure from different places, but it didn't work there, and it's a quick first down. Here's the first carry of the game for Zach Moss. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. From the 32-yard line now, here's second and six. Burrow looking to pass. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 45-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Moss on the give up the middle. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Burrow on play action. This is caught. Touchdown, Bengals. Trenton Irwin. 26 yards and the Bengals get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon well they spoke about the importance of getting off to a good start and they're on their first drive Charles into the end zone for the touchdown and what an advantage for them they're already clicking one drive in didn't need to wait to get up to full speed 
We had heard about the extra time they put in with each other, trying to learn each other's skills, what they liked, the whole deal, and it paid off early in this one. I would expect them to keep firing on the next drive and keep that connection going. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. First go on offense for the Giants under the guidance of Daniel Jones, the former Duke Blue Devil. I still remember when he was drafted, there was a little bit of controversy about how high he was selected by the New York Giants, but his talents were revealed. He can make every throw in the book. Surprisingly good athlete. As long as he takes care of the football, doesn't turn it over, he can really make plays. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that nearly trouble, but it's incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it, and it'll be second down. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. Now Jones. Big strides. Look at him go. And he'll take this all the way up to the 38-yard line. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. But give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. And he was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice gain. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Throwing Jones. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. Haven't met a corner that's worth this salt yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Back to throw again. Short throw, going to be caught by Waller. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. They'll look to throw again. Jones in trouble here, and down he goes. Sheldon Rankins abruptly ends that play with a sack. The start of this game shaping up nicely on that visiting sideline. Yeah, how about that? You get your points on the opening drive. Then you get a big sack there on third down. And you make the home crowd go, shh. There is a hush indeed. On fourth down, Jamie Gillen on to punt for the Giants. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Bengals take over first and 10. throw over the middle he finds Higgins give him a gain of five on the completion and it'll be second down
Morrow now off the bootleg. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Well, oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Now it's Burrow. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Now it's Burrow. And he'll spot Higgins open left side. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 40. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. Here's Burrow. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it. We can always lock in on the skill position, guys. Those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. Yeah, he's able to push his way forward somehow for a gain of about two yards. Second down now. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A very solid gain of 27. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They want to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit of the first quarter. Now they are set up first and goal. Let's go. Here's Hubbard. Power on power, but he's not going to get in. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. They'll run here with Hubbard, and he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Bengals have taken a 13 to nothing first quarter lead. Certainly there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast, but a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time in order to stop those guys?
Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it's now 14 to nothing. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. Singletary to get the drive started. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Jones off the play fake. And this will be caught. It's Isaiah Hodgins. And he's going to get this down inside the 40 before he's finally ridden out of bounds. It's a big-time play there for the G-Man. 41 yards. Seems like all the fireworks in this first quarter have been on the other sideline. But here they're saying, hey, we've got some explosive guys on our side, too. And that's a big play in a game that's looking like it might be full of big plays. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Operating from the gun, Jones. He's got this complete to Robinson. But he's brought down in the red zone at the 18 after a gain of 18, first and 10. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. It's D.J. Turner who's got it. And the Bengals are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. So cancel the interception, pass interference. And you know what else gets canceled? The return yardage. Makes the play, but now it's all for naught. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Devin Singletary, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Giants have got it back to within a score. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line, because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Gano the extra point, and that'll make our score 14 to 7. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25.
Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big gain there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. That's complete. Once again, it's Kosicki. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this. Back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. On second down, here's Burrow. A quick throw there is incomplete. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else for the football. I get it. That's a stud wide receiver. You want to try to get him the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They'll try and run for this with Moss. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll go again here with Moss. And able to use his stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good gain. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. A good position to be in here, second and inches. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Look at the big fella go. Touchdown. Mike Gesicki, 27 yards. And the Bengals have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Touchdowns on their first three possessions, and they're a PAT from going up 21 to 7. Yeah, very impressive the way that they've moved the football. Full command of their playbook, full command of the way they wanted to attack. McPherson on for the point after. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it all concluded with a touchdown pass to the tight end, Mike Gesicki. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. Another drive coming up for New York's offense. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but, Charles, they look up, and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now a throw downfield is taken in by his running back. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 18 more yards there and another first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They go right back to Singletary. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. Back to throw, Jones. And he had to reach for that one, but can't grab it. It's behind him, and it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Looking to throw, Jones. That is caught, and he will have a Giants first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. Jones now on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bengals' offense returns to the field. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. 
That's going to be caught by Moss. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. They go with the empty set there, five receivers in the formation. Normally, you want to have a running back in to block, but in this case, he's lined up to the right, and he ends up getting the football. A lot of confusion caused defensively, and it turns into a big play. Now Burrow on first down. Open man downfield is Chase. He's got it. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Another big play as they get 28 out of that one. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Now fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes I think these defensive tackles get a little bit of a bum rap. We just see them as big guys that eat up blockers for others to make tackles. Oftentimes, they're quicker than they get credit for. And this time, he uses quickness to make a play. On second down, Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 12-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Burrow. And this time he's got the hookup, it's complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Burrow looking to pass. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Mike Gesicki. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bengals are able to stretch out their lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. McPherson now for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it all concluded with a touchdown pass to the tight end, Mike Gesicki. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. And now out come the Giants. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Throwing Jones. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. 
and I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now Jones. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hopefully they can come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Back to throw. Jones. And that will be incomplete as well. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. And they go play action now, Burrow. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up, second and 10. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. It connects quickly to Jamar Chase. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The LSU connection, Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. They'll run on first down with Moss. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Here's second and seven. From midfield now, Burrow. Over the middle, it's complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 38-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now it's Burrow. Now a short one to Gesicki. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Hey, let's face it. You can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Burrow will throw. And his throw is incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way, a dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. On third down, Burrow. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Trenton Irwin with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bengals are able to add on to their first half lead. 
they have really had their way so far in the first half, but they wanted to continue to build on their lead. They know that no lead is safe in this league, so they decided to try their best to get one more as they headed into the half, and they got it done. And McPherson on for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie now from his end zone. They had only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Giants now going to take over late in this first half. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team. Right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Meanwhile, Jones throw taken in by Slayton. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Here's Jones on first and 10. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Throwing again on second and 10. Jones, that ball caught by Slayton. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Back to throw again. He'll find Hodgins there complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. Gano's kick is good, and they're back within three scores as it's now a 22-point game. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. Yeah. 
So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. Our leaders got a solid performance out of their quarterback in the first half. He's over 300 yards passing already as he's looking to possibly put his name in the record book. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Giants' offense set to begin this third quarter. Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive? on that play sheet for any of those coordinators. They just don't have it, right? <laughs> You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit, as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily, you pick up the guys downfield, and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. And that one complete to Hodgins. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Now we've got a giant player here slow to get up after that last play. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw, Jones. A short throw pulled in by Bellinger. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six at its second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. They'll look to throw again. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. He's up to 87 yards receiving now, and it's a first down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Jones. Going right side, he finds Slayton. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 23 yards on the play. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. They'll run on first down with Singletary. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. From the 24 now, here's a second and five. Singletary again, and he'll get a couple here down to the 22. 
Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game, and that's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in a running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. And this is caught at the eight. And the Giants are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Back to throw. Jones. Touchdown, Giants. Darius Slayton, a five-yard touchdown. And the Giants are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. And they're going to get the two-point conversion caught in the end zone. And that cuts the lead a bit further. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You can say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Ball on the 27. Here's second and a couple. Here's Burrow. Now a short one to Gesicki. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Second down and four. Again, it's Burrow. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. Touchdown, Bengals. T. Higgins, 63 yards. And the Bengals have moved out in front by three touchdowns. 
Well, this offense, they were dynamic in the first half. The halftime break, that didn't slow them down at all. Big strike here in the third quarter. It's almost as if they were saying, it's not just our skill in the first half is getting this done. It's confidence as well. And confidence has taken over this game in a big way. How about these strikes that we're seeing? Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie now from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Now here comes Daniel Jones and the Giants again. Last drive, surgeon-like, dare I say, seven for seven. That'll help your QB rating. <laughs> it will indeed, won't it? Can you figure out QB rating? Can you do I, it? Can no, you do the formula? No, I just know the higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> that's told, what too. I know. I know that in the NFL, 158.3 is the number they're all trying to get to. I think he was that on that last drive. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. If they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. From the 22, here's second and eight. Looking to throw. Jones. And his throw here is incomplete. Darren Waller, the intended receiver, and it's third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. To throw on third down, Jones. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. 33 yards that time. Now, look, you're not going to be able to get this all back at once, but that certainly helps. So you're saying three yards in a cloud of dust, not the strategy? I go aerial attack. Yeah, I think that's what has to happen. And if you're going to run it, you need to break off big chunks. We just saw a big play right there. They need plenty of those. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Operating from the gun, Jones. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So first and 10 now from the 30. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. Eight to go from the 28. On the handoff, it's Singletary. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. 
The 4-3 defense there did its job, funneled things right to the middle linebacker. If they do a nice job of playing team defense, everyone takes care of their responsibilities. That allows that guy in the middle to do his job, which is search and destroy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they'll get this down to the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. They run here with Singletary. A nice display of power, but it only takes him to the seven. He's dropped there. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Every team we ever talk to that continues to run the ball in a game, even when they haven't had much success, all talks about attrition, don't they? If you keep running it, eventually good things are likely to happen. It's been a hard go in this game today, hasn't it? Yeah, this defense, they've met pretty much every challenge in front of them this afternoon. They're still trying to run the ball, but they're not finding much space. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now this likely a must-have third and goal. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the park. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. There for the sack, B.J. Hill. He's known for his legs and his fancy footwork, but he's not getting much of a chance to use it here. The defense continued to hold the upper hand by bringing him down on that play. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. Desperation time now. Here's Jones. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Fourth down and they take to the air, which really isn't a major surprise. But how about the coverage they're able to bat it down? T. Higgins out on offense with the rest of his teammates for this next drive. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation. The catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. 48 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now, I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a seven-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. 
They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if he picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to be, second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 34-yard line. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 34. On the give, this is Moss. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. On second down, it's Moss again. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And this offense on third down today, no problems to this point. A perfect five for five. This is third and ten. Open man is chase complete. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so that you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And New York set to take the field. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Jones in trouble here, and down he goes. Sheldon Rankins able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Jones, and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Third down and 13. Operating from the gun, Jones. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, 
fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Giants first down on what will be a big play there on fourth and long. Well, give them credit. They're going to stay and fight this out to the end. Fourth down, you've got to go for it. And they not only convert, but pick up some good yardage as well. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. A short one here secured by the tight end Waller. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. That's what it is. That's what it is. Let's get it. Throwing Jones. Looking again for Waller, and he's got him again. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Now Jones. Now they go screen. It's complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another good completion on the drive as the Giants have a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Jones. And it's caught. Touchdown. Darren Waller, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Giants are able to cut into that deficit. Well, it seemed like they were so focused elsewhere, they forgot about the tight end spot, and he's the one that burns them there to make this a three-score game here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. I think there might be a little bit of defensive fatigue from those guys on that side of the ball, partner, because they've been spending their time trying to stop them from all angles. This time, the tight end gets them. I have to admit, I love the excitement of a two-point try, you know, to see what's going to happen, and, and it happens pretty quickly, doesn't it? You get an answer, and in this case, it was unsuccessful for the guys trying it. Completely unrelated. I just realized that I stole both your pins in this last half of the game. <laughs> My bad, partner. Hey, that's okay. Well, they, and, and just in the time, they went for two. Smart, baby. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. Oh. And who's got it? The Giants! So the onside kick is recovered. And, you know, I always thought, Charles, as someone who didn't play these positions, that going over the middle as a receiver or trying to recover an onside kick, those are two very tough things to do. It takes a lot of fortitude to put yourself in that position, but you have to do it in order to help your team win. Unable to recover it, it costs them. The kicking team gets the football here. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. 
Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Now Jones, now that's to the left sideline and incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Operating from the gun, Jones. Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Got a man, Slayton. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And the ball is out. Jones got hit and lost it. And the Bengals grab it. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Jamar Chase hoping to be at center stage yet again as the offense returns to the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. A very good starting field position for the Bengals here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That play was all Bobby Okereke as he got there and dragged him down for the loss. Well, there they went blitz defensively, Charles, and things were paved well coming from the linebacker position. I love the way that you described it, paved well. Oftentimes, the guy who gets home on the blitz, he's going to get all the credit, but his teammates did all the dirty work, right? They ran into people on purpose. They sometimes tugged on jerseys to hold linemen to create space and gaps. And that play finished off really, really well. Well-conceived, well-designed, and even better executed. Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from MetLife Stadium.